this is who she is. You know, I watched her arrival almost, you know. I wandered into the lodge in on a cold, wet morning to find you completely engrossed where usually when I arrive, you break a little bit and have a conversation and there was none of that. And there was none of that for hours. I left you for a while and came back and you were just right here. And you were like, oh, I got this thing going on. And I think it's like somebody from another galaxy or something. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, that it was, was crazy. That was the, the, you know, if I'm right, that was the very beginning was in Summerland four years ago this summer. Yeah. Yeah, so, it was. It was 2017 because I wrote down the date. Yep. Um, and uh, I didn't know who she was or what she was yet. I was mm -hmm. just getting these lyrics and this song idea flowing through me all of a sudden. And yeah, I had to shut the whole world out completely. Oh, well, and it was really kind of startling because Nine Toast was out on tour. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and oh, look, there's a different bar at breakfast than the one we had at bedtime last night. <laughs> oh, the schizophrenia of being yeah. a musician, right? Yeah. yeah. Is, you know, she's very different than you. She's very different than Nine Toes. Um, the level of. closure yeah non-transparency walls however it is it, one confines oneself within boundaries others may not look within uh, she's used to doing that yeah and all of this girlfriend and or friend or and relationship and stuff is all really foreign ground She's better at stars. Oh, and she's way better at stars. Right, she's better at stars and comets and planetary events. So, you know, the only way she knows to relate to this a traumatic and ecstatic experience she's having is through the way she's always related to the universe, which is the much bigger pieces that are moving around in their own ecstatic, traumatic experience. Yeah, it's really a matter of scale with her. Hang on a minute. Let me let me introduce you. Um, you are catching us. Hey, folks, if you're watching, um, you are catching Teresa uh, Lutz, one of my favorite people on the planet. She has long been a dear friend and almost as long as as our friendship began, she has also been um, like a super patron for me. Uh, and I'm not just talking about she buys my music and gifts my music and makes sure that she buys my music some more. Um, she actually feeds me when we're on the road. We meet up at a lot of festivals on the road traveling and she feeds me all the special foods that only I can eat. Um, she, she loves her, her artistic creative friends because she is artistic and creative as well. And, um, so I'm really, really excited. Um, I invited her to come and talk about Ava a little bit and to talk about her favorite Ava song um, because of all the people out here in Ava land who have been hearing the stories and starting to hear the songs and the music, Teresa has probably been one of the first people. And in fact, th what we were just talking about was that she was there the day that the first transmission came through when I didn't even know what I was listening to yet in my head. We so, didn't know her so name. talk a little bit more about, I didn't, didn't know her know name. I didn't know anything. Um, I didn't know what it was. Your name before the festival was over. If I recall correctly. Did I? It didn't take long before you got. I don't stuck. remember. I think that that's, that it yeah, was you know, first, but that she, you know, we had like a d two days of festival left yet after she popped in, I think. And like, she was there a lot, you know, that I said, I certainly, I don't, I'm not sure other than at concert that I saw nine times again at that festival. The nine toes was, was yeah, nine toes. Nine toes was the star on the stage, but that was, we were already on to the next production. Um, you know, have a great closing night, lady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. You know, honestly, I don't remember when I started actually understanding that, that what was coming through with Ava, but I do remember that the, the lyrics that I wrote that day um, were not the first song that I wrote with her. It was just a mess of lyrics and right. a kind of a, a, an idea. Right. And no, I scribbled I it all down really fast. I know a bunch of the lyrics for the, that and you it, read to me that day didn't turn up again for a couple of years. For a year. Yeah. yeah for it was time. a year, a year and a half. But, and, and, and you know why? Because I lost that notebook. Because it wasn't time yet. I couldn't find it. Because it wasn't, it wasn't time. time I did find it. Uh-huh. Yeah. When it was done. Isn't that crazy? Um, no, not the least bit. It was crazy. You know. <laughs> um, watching the whole evolution from that first scribbled notebook to f four years later, what one can only call a space opera talk to us you know um <laughs> 30, years in the future the perspective is certainly very different um it is the alienation and isolation of the kind of travel yeah, that yeah. that they do um is having traveled where I had no real anchor, but where I am today for a long time, long enough to not have an anchor and know what that's like. Only let's magnify it through time and time and way more years. Um, and yeah. you can. And the vastness of space yeah. in between everything. Right. Yeah. Right. I, it, and I think that, and I think that one of the reasons, yeah, I think that one of the reasons that it was that it's easy for me to be open to Ava is because we do have some similarities. You mm -hmm. know, I, you know, to in order to pursue my music, to pursue my creativity, to pursue my art, I really can't afford to have a relationship. It gets in mm -hmm. the way. And that's a crazy thing to say, but it's absolutely true. And I'm sure that someday there will be a moment when I will have another relationship. You have you other know, relationships. But... They're just not with people we just... get to see. And actually we can, <laughs> the people who know you get to see them. You know, yeah. uh, it is very distinct when Nine Toes arrives or departs. It oh, is yeah. very distinct when Ava is there and there is no mistaking either one of them for Mama Gina. Um, and it's, you know, becomes even for me, who is basically musically inept, I can't even keep rhythm on drums. There is video to prove it. Um, <laughs> I can still see, you know, the movement of those emotions through the music and through the time. Um, oh, wow. that, uh, the vastness of the experiences, um, and the intimacy of them at the same time, um, is very much reflected in the music. Thank you. It's, it's a real interesting dynamic because one of the reasons that she is so special in her time, 30,000 years in the future, um, is the vastness of space and how far apart we are spaced out in the Milky Way, which is pretty much what hum humanity has colonized, what they can colonize in the Milky Way. Um, and the amount of time that it takes to get from one place to another, and she's in cryo all that time, so she's skipping generations sometimes before she gets to her next stop. Um, people don't bring music from one place to another there's too much involved to do it. You know, there might be locals on a planet that do it, but as far as across the entire galaxy, mm -hmm. reaching generations, this one person and bringing the music back in an intimate way, instead of all digital, all electronic in, in mm -hmm. some kind of, you know, receptor within your inner ear, she's actually making you feel it externally, you know, it, in your skin. And, but she's, um, she's doing what bards have always done. And that's the thing that 
um, makes me able to enjoy the music. Yeah. Is, you know, I'm, I like bardic tales and watching this evolve from acoustic melody lines through your entire novice experience of <laughs> creating more music than you could with you and 12 strings. Yeah. Um, wow. There's a lot more music there. Um, and I wasn't sure at first as it started to change if I was going to be able to come along through this experience. Right. But because they're still all bardic tales, yeah. I found that indeed, um, and maybe partly because I do have this intimate previous experience with the music that indeed I was able to just come right along into music that generally may not have been within my actual comfort zone. Um, so it's been a real kind of musical growth experience for me as well, for as, me you. Too. <laughs> as, well as you watching, watching you hear this music and tell me, you know, that long ago, because I think you knew that first week, too, that you were going to have to learn new stuff, that the electronic music was coming, that you could hear it, and you couldn't make it yet, and you had to learn a whole lot of things, and uh, a whole lot of people have helped you along that path. Uh, Brian Henke has certainly taken your hand and gone, look, yep, let yep. me show you other things I know and people I know know so that you can use them so I can hear what you're going to do with them. <laughs> and this is why I wanted to talk to you because I love yeah. your enthusiasm and I appreciate that you love the music as much as I do. Um, and, uh, and you can see the changes. I mean, that validates a lot of what I've been through. So let's talk about the song that you said was one of your favorites uh, of hers. Um, and when I asked you about it, you didn't say the name of it, which is Hail the Sun. You said that Comet Love song. And I love that. Well, I and like, if, I'm yeah. right, I'm thinking, if I'm right, we're thinking of two different songs because the one I'm thinking of is the one about um, I was on a straight line. Yep. That's, that's it. Right okay. Yeah, that's Hail um, the Sun. So, yeah. Um, so, so I never can match them to their right names yet. It's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter um, as long as as long as you keep coming back for more. So, um, the for for folks who are listening to this and maybe haven't heard "Hail the Sun" or the story behind it, it is just real briefly. It is a love song from a comet to a dying star. This comet has fallen into orbit around this star, and the star is slowly dying. It's going to be millions of years, but with e the passage of time. This comet is burning away all of the ice because it's getting closer and closer in orbit to that sun. And over millions of years, they are finally going to merge into one. And it is a it is a love song. And it's about gravity and light and unconditional love, like all of Ava's songs. But this one is probably the one song out of the entire uh, 11 songs that I think I'm going to put on the CD. It's the one that is the closest to the acoustic version of the song. It's not getting so much. It's getting right. some orchestration, some cellos and things like that in the background and, you know, kind of, kind of mood kind of thing to take you along the ride, but I'm not doing a lot of dance beat or anything like that to it. Right. I'm just letting it be. So tell me, um, tell me about what you remember about hearing that song the first few times and, and what you were thinking. Um, I knew it was a love song immediately. I was never anything else. Um, um, it's, <laughs> it's the realization that to love, she has to give up who she is. Yeah. Because that's, you know, this is Ava's song. This one isn't, isn't yours. Ava's song. Oh, this is totally Ava. You know, you know that, that she wrote this song. You know, this is about her realization that everything 
she is is going to dissolve into something else and she's good with that yeah it's, you know, it's not and that's what it really is is and and i'm okay with that you know i understand where i'm going i get it i see it i know it i understand the destructiveness of it but i also understand the wow something new is going to come out of this and okay yeah the sheer beauty of of it you know there's there's a lot of implied entropy in this song too that even if it lasts millions of years at some point there is an ending mm -hmm. and you know something gets subsumed something gets sacrificed yeah um in in the final melding of of these two between the comet and the sun and it's just it's you know it's funny i actually did research for that song because i wanted the words to uh -huh. be right i wanted to capture that feeling of a comet and that feeling of a star that really you know relatively speaking isn't going anywhere it is its own center and right. and drawing in the things around it that it needs to keep moving for, for as long as it can time. yeah and um i wanted i wanted somehow to take that arc and also bring in even though it's not in the song it, it contains that element of Ava as the comet, right? Um, the, who's on a straight line and then suddenly is is falling into orbit around the star. And Camera, her lover who glows in the dark in the in the whole backstory with Ava. Um, and, and having Ava realize that she is not the center of anything anymore, that Camera is her center for mm -hmm. now and forever. And she knows that at some point inevitably she will spiral into camera and funny now that i'm thinking about it that's mm -hmm. very i didn't know the ending of the story when i wrote that song but I, and i'm not going to talk about all of that right now but that was fairly prescient because i <laughs> did when i did when you sang it for me i didn't know the exact path but i knew where things were going yeah it's uh yeah, I hadn't even thought about it until just now when I said it out loud. Yeah. Holy shit. I mean, there really was a merging at the yeah. end of it. The, wow. And I yeah, didn't the even first know time because I knew the backstory before I heard the, the, when I, the when when you really played this song, when it wasn't just sketches of the song. Right. And I was like, oh, my, I see more of where the story is going now. And, you know, I've been watching it's like watching, reading a serial, serialization of a book where yeah. you yeah. have to wait for the next chapter. That's how it's been following this is, you know, for almost four years ago, since the first glimpse of, oh, wow. Some more. Yeah, there you go. You're Duke, you hurry up and write some more. <laughs> hurry up and write some more. I know, I hear you, Duke. <laughs> I think I I have to focus on one thing at a time. I yeah, I, I don't multitask true. well, so we're gonna do this CD with the songs as written so far, and then I will uh, jump into writing some more. Well, it's not like well, you don't. Sure. It's not like you don't have bards waiting in line for your talents. I do. Um, I'm trying to give Ava my full focus and attention for the next right. few months because now that I've gotten this far, um, I have five songs recorded. Um, to the almost done point. They're not done yet. And I'm there. I, I've got everything to like the 95% point, five songs. And when I, when I get the other six songs to that 95%, then I'm going to sit down um, with somebody who's going to help me massage the last 5% right. out of everything all right. at the same time so that we have some continuity through the right. songs. Um, and then I'm going to release. And so I finally said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm almost halfway through these songs. It's time to commit to a release date. It's time to say, I'm going to get this done. No more dragging my feet during these times of COVID. Um, I have to get this done. And I, I'm so excited. I'm just, I'm so excited. And Ava is excited. I got to tell you, she's talking to me again. Um, she didn't talk to me for a while. She was letting me learn the technology right. that I needed to learn. Right um I, i've got i've got um she had this, no she had no vested interest in your educational process only its results that's right that's that absolutely kind of girl, right she, um 
she kind of speaks to me sometimes a bit where I know things about her because <laughs> I know her. It's like your friend where, you know, if you've met them, you can say things about them, even if they didn't directly tell you that, you know, I can just sense that that was the exact reaction was no, I didn't need to know all those messy parts about how, how she learned to use the equipment are you right. kidding no right I just need her to be good enough so that she right. can get the songs out to right. people and right. so That's what yeah she's interested in, is the result in that you're yes you're way closer than you were in Wisconsin <laughs> yeah four years ago yeah so We're not yeah, thirty thousand years from now but she doesn't really have any expectation simply because the kinds of sounds that can be created right right are this is interesting and i'm actually struggling with some of this because i i want the music to sound familiar to people uh -huh. here and now because i would love to sell some cds right. and not just to the people who love me but to just people who actually hear the music for the first time and go wow i've got to have that right. um you know i want to i want to grow that that interest so i have to make things that i have to make music that is accessible to our current ears yes. but i'm also trying very hard to push some boundaries. Mm -hmm. So buried in a lot of the tracks, um, I am using for some percussive sounds, I am using some stuff that I've downloaded from the NASA website that are like sounds from quasars and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I've manipulated them into short bursts and beats so that I can create a rhythm with uh -huh. these things and so i have these things nested in a lot of the songs and i've been trying to figure out a way to sweeten her voice a little bit on the tracks uh -huh. um to give it a little bit of a different feel a more futuristic feel i'm struggling with that and i'm not sure where that's actually going to go i might just wind up going with kind of what we might hear you know in a really cool like grace jones album or something but um uh, you know what, it, that's all okay. But yeah, I want, uh, it's hard because I can actually hear what she hears, uh -huh. but there are some things that I have no way of doing because we don't have the technology right. yet. Right. I don't have the access to it, but I do have access to some of these sounds. I just did a, um, I just finished a lyric video for Between the Stars, which by the way was the, the, the lyrics for Between the Stars were the lyrics that I was writing that day in Wisconsin. Okay. But I just finished the lyric video and what I did was I just went out and got a ton of Hubble web uh, Hubble telescope images and put it all in in the, you know, uh right. in the in the lyric video behind the lyrics and it's it just it makes me feel all swimmy in between the stars. And so I I, I really want to try to give it a futuristic feel but not a phony futuristic feel. I want it it's real you know to me right. ava is completely entirely real i mean she inhabits me um when when she's transmitting the stories um she sits on the edges of my consciousness when i'm writing mm -hmm. you know she's right there with me right. um she lets me write but her ideas all come through and i some of the things that i hear from her i don't have a translation for and that yeah. makes it really interesting it's like i've got to make a call how am i going to make this happen so. right. Is that what you're, you're, yeah you know what i i i just i love your enthusiasm and honestly to, to be perfectly honest i trust your instincts and I, there have been times not with the ava stuff but there have been times when i've played you something and you've said i like it but maybe you should slow that down you know uh, or in this world yep. That's right. And I trust your instincts, you know, um, I don't have to just rely on my highfalutin musician mixing friends to tell me what's right and wrong. I can listen to people who love me tell me the truth about my music uh -huh. and it really helps. It really helps. Um, well, musicians see different find things the right than direction. I do. Yeah, but you know, I'm not the a thing musician. that you do and you do it with an open heart is you know you let the music um, affect you mm -hmm. and Inhabit. you know how you feel. 
Yes, it didn't happen. And that's fully in. That's such a beautiful thing, and it's a beautiful gift for musicians to to have friends that can actually feel their music. Um, and it's I just love it. I love well, it. You having, are amazing. Having started listening to you with your early goddess and god inspired <laughs> works so many of them had um amazing uh energistic power packed within them that you know kind of unfolded like some complicated you know antenna or something um when you heard them <laughs> um that once you know you learn to open up to your music i learned to trust what I was hearing because if I could open all that way and trust you could get a really powerful effect that didn't come through if you were just listening with your ears you know oh, I, wow. met, I met Thank I you. met one of my patron gods you know pretty much because of That's one true. of your songs where I went oh I came home to, to play it for Duke and I don't know, some dude who's hanging upside down from a tree. Let me look him up so I get this right. When I looked him up, I went, oh, you're the dude that's been bothering me for I know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That is awesome. Well, yeah, Teresa, I, I want to thank you from the time. bottom of <laughs> I know. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for sharing your thoughts on the music. And we're going to do this again, you know. I'm going to pick on you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, say goodbye to everybody. Bye, Bye Teresa. Bye.